O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Welcome, everyone, to the Brent Hall Family Service, wherever you are. Whether you're just down the lane or halfway across the world, you are very welcome, all of you. I'm Helen, this is David, and we're the Church Wardens of Brent Hall. We're now going to go straight to Hazel Butland from her garden, who is going to be starting the service. Good morning, everyone, or maybe it's good afternoon, but wherever you are, and whether you are up and dressed, or perhaps having a late breakfast in your pyjamas, welcome to my garden. The sun is shining and the birds are singing, but there's virtually no traffic going by. Do you know, ever since we moved to Dartmoor nearly six years ago, I have been longing to have an open air service in the garden. And now I can, so I'm very excited. And I'm surrounded by birds to keep me company. This is a family service. And sometimes when I lead the family service, I have my grandsons helping me. Occasionally, they are here playing in the garden. But like so many other people around the world at the moment, they are in lockdown and are probably playing in their garden in Kenya. But they have helped me by doing some colouring, which we will look at later. Thank you, boys. Today, we are looking at Acts chapter 2, when Peter boldly addresses the crowd. This picture and words on the first page of the order of the service sum that up. Peter raised his voice and addressed the crowd. All people of Israel know this. This Jesus, whom you crucified, whom you crucified, God has made both Lord and Messiah. And now, if you have one in front of you, please turn back to the service sheets. Out in the garden, or when I'm walking from Dartmoor, I find it easy to give thanks and praise God. So I will now use the words of thanksgiving in the order of service. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. It's relatively easy for me to be joyful in the garden, but I know for a lot of families living in lockdown can be very tough. It can be hard to be patient and kind and self-controlled all the time. So let's say sorry to God for the times when we have not been so kind or patient as we should have been. It's still the Easter season, so we will reflect on the Easter story as we do. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder 
of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now we have confessed our sins, we're going to sing again. Wendy is going to lead us as we sing a modern version of Psalm 23, The Lord's My Shepherd by Stuart Townend. And then Nick, my husband, will read from Luke, The Road to Emmaus story, and Laurie will read to us from Acts. The Road to Emmaus reading is quite long, and Nick read it in the garden too. Whilst he was reading it, he was joined by a very vocal wren and a chiff-chaff. But I'm sure the birds were singing with great joy on that first Easter day when Jesus, their creator, was travelling with the disciples to Emmaus. Let's sing. It's me. 
Now, on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it's now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning. And when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Peter addresses the crowd. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and a Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, 
and that day about 3,000 persons were added. Thanks to Nick and Lolly for their readings. And now we're going to sing our next hymn, Spirit of the Living God, Fall Afresh on Me. And after that, we'll be going to Hazel for her sermon from her garden. As we reflect on God's word now, I'm going to begin with a prayer we use in morning prayer. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. I mentioned earlier that we would have a look at my grandson's pictures. So I thought we would do so now. I hope you enjoyed singing, The Lord's My Shepherd. I love that version. So I asked Josh and Zach to do a coloring of the parable of the good shepherd, the shepherd looking for the lost sheep. And so here we are. First of all, we've got uh, Josh's picture that uh, Josh is six and this is the colouring that he's done. As you can see, the shepherd in yellow is looking for the sheep in the vegetation. And well, actually, he's fairly easy to see because Josh has coloured it in black, which of course is totally appropriate for a lost sheep. And this is Zach's picture. Now, Zach is, he's four, and he's done much more brightly coloured vegetation, so it's much harder for the shepherd to find the blue sheep among the blue and yellow and red vegetation. Thank you, boys, for lovely colouring. But it's the words at the bottom that are important, because they say, he will go and look for the lost sheep. He will go and look for the lost sheep. Jesus, our good shepherd, searches for the lost, the sad, the confused and frightened. He gathers them up and brings them home. And isn't that a good picture of what happened on the road to Emmaus. These two disciples were so confused and sad, and I'm sure exhausted by all that had happened over the last three days. Jesus, their special friend, had been arrested and dragged away to be killed, and they couldn't get their heads around it. They were completely lost without him. Everything they had hoped for seem to have been taken away. They and the other disciples were terrified of what might happen to them now. Would they be killed too? So they'd hidden behind locked doors. They'd gone into lockdown. 
But for some reason, these two, after hearing the news that the tomb was empty and that some of the women had seen a vision of angels who told them that Jesus was alive, somehow that seemed to be the last straw. They had decided to leave and go home, go back to Emmaus. Why did they leave? Do you think the atmosphere in the locked room was grim, very tense, and they needed some space to get their heads round things? Maybe that's correct. Well, the risen Lord certainly made sure they did get their heads round things. The Good Shepherd gently, patiently and lovingly helped them to understand and then revealed himself to them as he broke bread and blessed it. Their eyes were suddenly opened and then he vanished. And of course, well, they had to get back to their friends, to their true new home, their new community, to celebrate that Jesus is alive. What did they say to each other when they recognised Jesus as he broke bread in Emmaus? Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? Weren't our hearts on fire within us, on fire with love? I prayed that at the beginning of this talk, before he look, we looked at the pictures set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever isn't that what happened on the day of pentecost for peter and the others who'd been gathered together and obediently waiting for the coming of the holy spirit such an awesome day a morning of unbelievable transformation after Jesus' resurrection and ascension, the disciples, well, they weren't sad any longer, but they were still in the upper room. Jesus had told them to wait there. And this time, his little flock did, and they devoted themselves to prayer. And they waited. They waited until the day of Pentecost, another Jewish festival when Jerusalem would be teeming with people again. You see, God's timing is perfect. What he was going to do, well, they, the disciples needed an audience, the biggest audience possible. God was about to do something absolutely amazing. It needed to happen in the middle of a city with streets full of people coming to Jerusalem for the festival. And oh, what a festival it turned out to be. Suddenly, the sound of rushing wind and then tongues of fire settled on each of the disciples and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, with power and boldness and love. And they were talking and talking, talking in different languages they didn't know, but their listeners did. The foreigners all heard them talking in their own languages and they were absolutely amazed. Suddenly, Peter boldly addressed the crowd. Peter, that same Peter, who had been so frightened a few weeks earlier that he denied knowing Jesus at the time of Jesus' death. And now he was bursting with excitement and his heart burning within him with love and joy. He was completely transformed. He addressed the crowd of festival goers the house of Israel. All people of Israel know for sure, this Jesus whom you crucified, God has made both Lord and Messiah. Peter accused them of murdering their long awaited Messiah, their true King. That's very powerful stuff. What an awful thing to be accused of. But the message sank in. But peace Peter also told them with great joy that he and all those who were with him, at, at, all those overflowing with joy, were witnesses of the fact that God had raised Jesus from the dead. 
what are we to do, the crowd asked. Peter said, repent, be baptised and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit too. And as Peter said, the promise of the gift of the Holy Spirit is for everyone who the Lord calls to him. Every one of us. What an awesome gift. A gift, a wonderful gift of refreshment for each of us in this time of uncertainty and lockdown. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us is a very special prayer. The Spirit in us transforms us, moulding us to make us more like Christ, making us more loving, filling us with joy and peace, giving us patience, gentleness and self-control, um, making us kind and good and giving us faith when we doubt. Well, that's quite a list. And at the moment in lockdown, we may feel our patience is wearing thin. We may feel irritable rather than at peace. Yes, we may feel we lack some of those special fruit of the spirit as they're called. So let's pray. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Comfort us in our troubles. Give us patience and hope during this lockdown. And may we all know the joy and the love that Peter and your first disciples knew, setting our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Hazel, for that. And we're now going to go on to the Song Creed, We Believe in God the Father, and then to Amanda for our prayers today. We thank you, God, that we can know your love and joy through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We thank you, God, for your creation which surrounds us, the flowers and the birdsong, so beautiful, reminding us 
of you and your love for us. We thank you, God, for all the rainbows that children have made to thank the NHS workers and for those who clap on Thursday evenings. We really appreciate all they and the government are doing to keep us safe. We thank you, God, that you are walking with us through this difficult time, just as you walked with the disciples on the road to Emmaus. Help us to see you in the midst of the chaos. God, we remember all those who are struggling at this time, particularly those who are ill and who need the care of St Luke's Hospice. We also remember those who have lost family and friends and cannot commemorate their lives at this time as they would wish to do so. Be with them all and comfort them. We thank you, God, that you are our light in the darkness, guiding us through, who, despite our circumstances, gives us hope, love and joy. Amen. Now for our collect, the special prayer for today. Risen Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. Right, this is our notices slot. And an important thing about notices today, if you've been able to download the order of service, you can see that there is a rather good line drawing there and I'm going to have a go at this later on with William. William is my little grandson, he's two, and we'll see how we get on really, but he enjoys it and I shall enjoy it. Our midweek reflection this week is from David, so it could be over to you later on this week. Thank you very much for joining us. Oh yes, thank you very much everyone. Our last song today is Shine, Jesus Shine, so please join us to sing. 